Uh, Mohammed Mera, who is the the shooter, the the alleged murderer from the French school, Jewish school in Toulouse, and from a couple of other shootings, the motorbike shooter, as we are knowing him, Lewis, uh, he is now dead. He jumped out of a a window after a 32-hour siege. I mean, I don't want to call it a shootout because it wasn't really there wasn't shooting going on the full 32 hours. He jumped out of a window. It was a standoff. It was a standoff, exactly. He hid in a bathroom and then came out shooting madly. Two police officers were injured, one seriously injured. They stormed into his apartment, his flat, as it is known in, in Europe, and he jumped out of the window, continuing to shoot, and he was found dead on the ground. I've read conflicting reports, some saying he died from the impact on the ground, some saying he was actually shot by a sniper while in the air. Hmm. Well, either way, he's dead. He is dead. That, that seems to be clear. And the decision, the decision to I think, just... I think what we can deduce from this is that he's dead and that before he died, he thought he was Rambo. Yeah, I those think, two things seem to be yeah. uh, probably just kind of the basics. Police say they decided to go in after him after he threatened to kill police. And he actually had turned, uh, it turns out he had broken out of an Afghan jail in 2008 and he has been tracked for years. So this is one of those situations, Lewis, where now we are after the fact, obviously hindsight is 2020. We're saying, wait a second. We were aware of this guy as a risk for years, and he was able to do multiple shootings before he was finally tracked down. What happened here? And is this just is this just one of those things that you, you can't constantly know where everybody is? Or were mistakes made? I, I'm sure it will be... Or did this man have a, another identity that was very convincing? How did he get to France? How did he break out in the first place? How did he get to France? How did he rent this apartment? How did he pull all of this off uh, completely under the radar? Oh, well, a lot of questions from Lewis. I mean, what's your reaction to this, Natan? What happens next with this guy? Is the focus going to be on rising anti-Semitism in Europe, which we're going to discuss? Is it going to be on how this guy wasn't on people's radar enough to, to be captured after the first shooting? Probably both. I'm just thinking whether in these types of situations it's better for the guy to be killed as opposed to being arrested and then brought to justice. Not so much in terms of, like, the media coverage, so much as, you know, the family. Like, like what would they want? I it's actually, my clear. reaction was it would have been better for the, it's too bad that this guy is already dead because number one, it's very possible we could have learned quite a bit more about the situation and prevented future situations. We could have gotten down to the, to the bottom of what were his actual motivations. We seem to think now he was an Al-Qaeda fanatic. I, I'm actually disappointed that he, that we're not going to be able to try him and, and find out information about what happened. Yeah, the only, the only good thing uh, that would have come out of him remaining alive would be information, I think. And they didn't, uh, they're assuming that he was responsible for the other shootings, right? They don't know 100% that, uh, it's, is that it's correct? all still, you know, how we have to say it's all just alleged. Right. So now we may never know if he was the one responsible for those other shootings. Well, we'll see. Yeah. I, I mean, certainly there will, there will probably be documents, computer records, all of that stuff that we can look at. Right, right.